Do you want ideas for quickly using pattern paper without making any scraps? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So let's get making. Today I have 6x6 paper busting template for A2 size cards number 42, which means that there are 41 other paper busting templates available at JessCrafts.com. So if you like this idea of creating pattern paper without scraps, but maybe this design isn't for you, then there are 41 other designs to check out and use. This one is a little bit uh, tricky just because it doesn't work very well with single sided paper. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that, but you can do it with, with single sided paper. It just is a little bit different. Okay, so the paper busting template tells you to cut your six by six paper into a three by six inch piece. So that would be like this. And then you're gonna cut this diagonal piece. And it's two and a half inches long on this side and three quarters of an inch on this side. That's a little bit of a difficult measurement because you have to make this like diagonal cut. So you wanna measure this with a ruler and mark it and measure this with a ruler, mark it and cut from one point to the other, which I will demonstrate. But you can also create a cutting guide so I just made this two and a half on this side, three quarters on this side, and I'm gonna keep this labeled with my template. So I keep my templates in a binder. If you wanna see that, I have a video about how I store my templates, but they're all in page protectors. And I can just slip this in the page protector and I don't have to do the measurements next time. I can just kind of hold this up to the paper and make the cut. So the reason I say that it's a little bit tricky with single-sided paper is here's the sketch. And this sketch, if I was working with single-sided paper, I'm taking the big piece that's opposite the small piece, and I can layer them together to match this sketch. If I had single-sided paper, the other two pieces make a mirror image of the sketch. And so then you would have to put it on the right side of the card instead of the left side. So technically it doesn't follow the sketch but it's not a big deal. You can totally just do it that way. And then it does work with single-sided paper. Directional paper is also fine because I don't change the direction of anything. So if you have a clear top and bottom, you're good. If you have double-sided pattern paper, you can mix things up. You can flip it over for the second card. You can mix the two sides of the card. You know, you can change things up how you like and just kind of make this general pattern. Once you have your three by six pieces, then you'll want to make a mark. And you can do that right there on your paper trimmer. The directions explain exactly how to make the marks on the paper. But if you mark it at five and a quarter on one side and two and a half on the other, it also gives you the reverse measurements, the three and a half. So you can do it whichever way makes more sense to your brain. But you don't really have, it doesn't have to be any particular thing. So as long as you are going to, and we're gonna, we're gonna test this out, because some of these things are where you make sense in my head, but as long as it's five and a half on one side, then the next marking shouldn't really matter. So if I make a little mark at five and a half, and then I just chop a diagonal, it should work. Let's see if it works. So this is obviously, because here's like the measured size, a different size of, um, you know, this triangular piece here, but it still makes the same card. And it's just gonna give you different proportion, proportions of each paper. So hopefully that makes sense and that will allow you to feel encouraged to make a sort of faster way of doing it and not necessarily have to use the measurement. Although once you make the cutting guide, it is super fast anyway. I'm gonna actually assemble my card as technically wrong because I'm going to do the one that's opposite. And I'm going to make more than one card so you'll actually see that in the end blog post or pictures or whatever. But you know, it's just one of those things I just wanna assure you, it doesn't actually matter all that much. It's not really about following exact rules to make this work. It's about just having fun and actually getting that pattern paper onto cards without the dilemma of having some scraps left over that we then have to figure out what to do with on our next project. So just add some adhesive to the back and layer them up. There is no mats for this project, which is what makes it super, super fast to work with. So what you're gonna do with your second piece of paper is line it up in the corner of your first one and along the edge there so that they overlap perfectly 
and then that is the sketch design. And then we'll keep assembling a card to you know show you that complete idea. If you're thinking, as I kind of was to myself to a certain extent, why did you choose such a difficult paper? Because it's a little bit odd, like, you know, this this sort of drab background and then flipping it over and having the rainbow, but it's only this partial rainbow. And I was actually inspired by a new release from Spellbinder. So I have this duck with umbrella and the I've got you covered. So it's part of the showered with love release. There's a lot of really cute things, but I fell in love with the duck and he's got quite a few pieces, but there's different ways of dressing him up. And he, so it makes it really, really cute. And of course, Spellbinders does what it always does. and makes it easy by attaching things that you would traditionally all cut out of the same color. So I have an unassembled duck and some assembled ducks so that we can take a look at it. But oh my gosh, he's just adorable. And not only is like, you know, cause this pattern part of the pattern paper kind of looks like water and rain and then it has the rainbows which makes sense with you know this duck dressed up for the rain but there's also this sentiment in the stamp set that says you can't have a rainbow without a little rain and so that, that's my pattern paper inspiration there so here is the duck like complete with galoshes and everything i think that's so cute you can do it though without the rain boots as well and you can do just a plain duck if you don't need a rainy day duck. And I love that because if you're thinking ahead like me, well, this little duck would be perfect for Valentine's Day on top of, you know, using it with this sentiment set or using it with the rain theme as I just now have a duck for, for that holiday as well. So we have this little duck and he gets, you can dress him up, like I said, to varying degrees. We want to get out our Barely Art glue to assemble the deck, put on his little hat. Do kind of think ahead a little bit about like, you don't want to put glue all over the hat because if you look, not every piece of the hat is going to be covered by the duck. So you might accidentally glue it to your work surface. It can be helpful to work on like a scrap paper or like scrap parchment paper, something that's not so sticky if you tend to be like an over gluer. And I always like to look at the example to give me some tips. This doesn't show the completely dressed duck though, so that's why I wanted to demo it for you here. And so I'll just put it a little bit on the bottom and you wanna line up the front of the hat along the edge. Liquid glue is particularly helpful in this situation because you can kind of wiggle things around a bit till you get it so in the right place. The hat and the brim are all one piece here on the die set. I should take that out of the bag for you so that there's less glare on it. Sorry about that guys, I didn't think about that in advance. And then layer it up. And even though they are out of the same color of cardstock, it does give it the look of some dimension there. You can of course cut it out of two different pieces of cardstock or color one of them to be slightly darker if that works better for you. Okay, and then the these pieces I will admit, and maybe I'm, I'm not using them correctly, but I think I figured it out. I think this is supposed to be like a little insert, like little latches on, oh, I'm so sorry. I gotta remember to bring it up to focus it. Little latches on the coat. So that's these, this piece here, latches with the coat. I think you could, you know, do something a little bit different if you wanted to, but that's, how I'm assuming the die is intended to work. Okay, so then you kind of fit the die into the missing areas on the purple piece, or the raincoat in this instance. And then I put the back, the sticky sheet on the back of that without fully realizing how everything was assembled at the time that I cut it all out. And now we're gonna fit this on to the duck, which again, I had to think carefully about how it would go. It's gonna go around his neck and line up with his back. So that is the main thing that you wanna line up is this area along the back of the duck and this corner goes into where his head meets his back and that will help you to lay it in the perfect spot. 
So I hope going slow like this is helpful because I, I don't know if it's just me. I'm just, I, maybe it's just I'm personally kind of challenged by intricate dyes, but I want you to feel confident going into it. So this is the wing, which if you're just making the plain duck, you just, you know, put it in the center of his body. And there's even a little impression left when you die cut it that shows you where the wing goes. But I've covered that because I've put the raincoat on him. And there is little impressions that show you where the pocket and the sleeve of the coat go. So I am going to add the wing underneath that, kind of fitting it there into the sleeve impression. And I did some contrast here where I chose pink for these little zipper latch pieces, the pocket and the sleeve. But of course you could do it all in the same color as the coat, in which case you want this one and this one, these two dies, to be cut up from the same color. And then this one I will line up over the impression that left behind. Sorry, I know like assembling dies is not the quickest thing, but again, for those who think this guy is adorable, I hope this is helpful. Line up the little pocket. The eye, it cuts a little hole for the eye and you'll want to back the duck with a little bit of white behind the eye hole or you could die cut another one of these eyes and take that little white eye out and fit it in but I think putting a little white cover behind the duck is the faster way to do things so that's what I chose to do but there's also an impression on the duck for where his eye goes and where his beak go so that again you do not have to second guess it so you know I'm walking you through it but Spellbinders has done a lot of the work for you as well it is the reason that they are like my favorite company to get these intricate dies from because I, I need all this help all right so then we want to fit this in and this is also where the picture comes in handy because there's a picture that shows you what the beak looks like in terms of gluing the feet I kind of find it helpful to like position the feet how you like them on your mat and then add a little glue to the top and then press the duck down onto the feet versus trying to like push the foot behind the duck but that might just be a personal preference and think about where the duck's feet would stick out in a realistic way. If you're going to add the galoshes, you may want to separate the duck's feet a little bit more. One of the reasons that I like to make sometimes really clean and simple cards in terms of like that's my design there is because I, when I take all that time to die cut and assemble the duck, it's okay because I've saved some time with the other part of my design. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment on a strip of white paper to help ground the duck in my design. I give him kind of something to be standing on a bit. Okay, this is a little inappropriate, I guess. I don't know. But like, I didn't like having the duck overlap because I always think it's weird when like something looks like it might be coming out of the butt. <laughs> like he's releasing rainbows. I don't know. Like, it's just, it strikes me as odd. I don't like to do that. I like to make sure it's on a, um, uh, like a more neutral background in that sense but yeah sorry if that was I don't know inappropriate <laughs> but we're going to now um, stamp a the sentiment you can't have a rainbow without a little rain and think about where we're gonna try to place everything here so that I can stamp my sentiment in the right spot you can get out like a stamp positioner or a misty if you want. I have stamped this a few times on scrap paper to make sure that I'm getting a pretty decent impression. And then I wanna make sure that I don't let it dry too much because I'm jibber jabber in here. All right, stamp it down. When I use a stamp block, I like ones with grids and stamping on my grid mat because I'll get it straighter than I would otherwise. And I like to hold it down for a little bit so that the ink has time to transfer. I don't want to like smush it, but like just, you know, firmly hold it down. Give the ink a few minutes to transfer because I find I tend to get a little bit better of an impression when I do that. And then we'll stamp, or sorry, we'll glue this down, glue our little duck on top, and then I can create a few more with the other 
cute little ducks I've assembled. So I just want to take one little quick look at these to just kind of show you, because I did switch back to the one that looks like the sketch, but like if I were to put all the paper on the other side, this is what I would do. I would make it such that the duck is still on the left side and facing towards the sentiment. I wouldn't want the duck to be looking directly off the card with the sentiment behind them. I think that it's important for the line of sight of a critter or person on the card to lead you towards the sentiment generally or towards the inside, like where I want you to look next. And I also used the paper that I cut that was actually a little bit of a different size. I didn't use the exact measurements. I kind of just went rogue and, and chopped the paper. And I actually kind of like it better because it gives you more of the rainbow look. And then we all can agree that the one on the galoshes is the cutest, right? Or rain boots or wellies or whatever that you call them. And leave me a comment below with what you call them if you're with me that he's the cutest. Or you can just tell me that what, what you call them even if you don't. But I think those are the, those are the three words I'm familiar with for them. But um, yeah, I just, I can't resist his little shoes. I think they are so, so cute. If you found this video helpful, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.